Welcome back to National Report. Wokeness is on the rise in American culture, whether it's Bud Light turning to transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney or our military implementing policies to be more inclusive. It's impacting nearly every aspect of American life. And looking behind the curtain, a lot of this has been pushed by those on the left. Some are warning that this is an introduction to Marxism, making comparisons to Cuba, to Russia. Texas Senator Ted Cruz fighting back. He has a new book out now titled Unwoke, How to Defeat Cultural Marxism in America. You see it here, where he lays out his plan, his battle plan for how to combat this attack on American culture. Texas Senator joins us live now in studio. Good to see you, Senator. Thanks so much for coming on. Sean, Emma, Good thank time. you for having me. Glad to be here. Excited to dive into this book and to really get involved in it and to find out what is behind the pages there for the American viewers. But before we do that, yeah. there's been a lot of obvious uh, divide with the Democrat Party that we've seen most recently over ceasefire calls yes. with Israel, Hamas, anti-Semitism on the rise, the ripping down the kidnap posters. Uh, but it went a little further with Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. I wanted to show you this if I can. Mm -hmm. There was a tweet that was put out with this video here. We paused it on this moment where the Congresswoman says this. Of the President of the United States right now, Joe Biden supported the genocide of the Palestinian people. There's been a lot of criticism for the President on this, specifically from the squad. But again, going past the line here, uh, using the term genocide with yeah. this President. Uh, again, a, a member of the lower chamber, your thoughts here. Look, the radical left, what we're seeing, the vicious anti-Semitism, the, the passionate hatred for Israel on the radical left, whether it's in the squad in the House, whether it's in universities across the country where you have these angry and violent protests, it, it, it's a manifestation of, of, frankly, what the book Unwoke is all about, which is the, the cultural Marxists that have seized so many institutions of our society. You know, in Rashida Tlaib's tweet that you have there, Right before she accuses Joe Biden of, of genocide, she also repeats the phrase, from the river to the sea. Now, what that means, that's from the Jordan River all the way to the ocean, and that is the cry of Hamas to eradicate the state of Israel, to eliminate every Jew in Israel. And, 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 and the sad thing is, Tlaib is not an outlier. This is today's Democrat Party, where it's normalized, and, and, and it, is a, it is a symptom of, of the cultural Marxist takeover of institutions throughout our nation. You know, we've seen protests pop up across college campuses, yeah. and it's young folks who are getting involved in participating in these anti-Israel protests. You know, I, I know you've spoken out before about the DOJ getting involved in social media, yes. maybe perhaps uh, silencing of conservatives. Is it worthwhile for the DOJ to investigate those who are participating in these sort of protests? Well, the, the sad reality is the Biden DOJ agrees with the protesters, agrees with the radicals. They are on the other side of the culture wars. What this book on woke does is, is it, I, I wrote it because like so many of us, you're wondering what the hell is happening to our country? It, it's like we've gone nuts. And, and the book explores what happened. It explains how and why the radical left took over the institutions of our nation. But then it gives a battle plan to fight back how we win. And so it starts, chapter one is the universities, the Wuhan lab of the woke virus. And, and the universities are where the virus was created. It's where it mutated. It's where it spread. And then each chapter of the book focuses on a different institution that was captured. And so it goes from universities to K through 12, from there to journalism, from there to big business, from there to big tech, from there to entertainment, to movies and TV and music and sports, from there to science. And in every one of them, what we've seen is the radical left, they frame things in a Marxist worldview. Marx viewed an inevitable conflict between oppressors and victims. And the solution is a violent overthrow by the victims to use government to forcibly redistribute from the oppressors. You know, two weeks ago, I was sitting down with a very successful tech entrepreneur who's historically leaned quite left. And he was asking me in confusion, where did this anti-Semitism come from in the Democrat Party and our universities? And I said, listen, this is the cultural Marxist worldview. They have coded Jews as oppressors. And they have coded Palestinians as victims. And the solution for the cultural Marxist is violent revolution to forcibly redistribute. And that's why Tlaib is screaming 
from the river to the sea. And, and the left supports that revolution because they've embraced the Marxist worldview. Again, a major breakdown within uh, this book here, Unwoke. Um, talking about that, I wonder if we could uh, talk about your home state here yeah. in, in Texas and what's happening with the border crossings. We were reporting on that caravan on the way, but this isn't new. These border policies that have been implemented or lack thereof. Uh, we've seen uh, Mexico President Obrador here criticize what you see, these floating barriers, calling them inhumane. But bottom line is the governor... Abbott is doing whatever he can, clearly not getting enough federal resources that have been requested. What are your thoughts on how this is being handled at the border, specifically there in your state, sir? Well, listen, I, th I think Texas is doing everything it can to fight to secure the border. And the problem is that, that the Biden administration is fighting on the side of the cartels. The Biden administration wants this crisis to happen. I was down at the southern border two weeks ago. I went out on midnight patrol with the Border Patrol agents, as I have many, many times. Within minutes, you encounter a group of illegal aliens. The first group we encountered was about 20 to 25, mostly women and children. There was a 13-year-old girl who was unaccompanied, had no family member with her. There was a 15-year-old boy unaccompanied. There was a 16-year-old girl unaccompanied. They all said they were going to see their tío, which is Spanish for uncle. Now, when we asked them, tell us about their, your tío, oh, no, no, he doesn't know we're coming. That We just have a number to call. It was clear this was not their uncle. These children were being trafficked. And, and I got to tell you, Sean, what was really disturbing. There was a 10-year-old girl there who was with a man that she said was her father. It was obvious this man was not her father. The girl was terrified. You could see the absolute look of terror in her eyes. He had his arm around her, and it wasn't the caress of, of a father. He had his arm forcibly holding her. And, and this is a pattern we're seeing more and more. You know, when President Trump was in office, they DNA tested any adult man who arrived with young kids, and about 30% of the kids were completely unrelated to the men they were showing up with. When Joe Biden came into office, he ended the DNA testing because they don't want to know. And the, the reason is... The cartels are literally renting children to the adult males coming into this country. It is horrific. It is evil. And the Border Patrol agents are so frustrated because under Joe Biden's policies, they can't do a thing about that little girl who was being abused because Joe Biden and the Democrats want the southern border open. Well, now we've seen so-called sanctuary cities yeah. deal with the influx of migrants. They don't have the resources. Yeah. You know, we've also seen testimony by DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas in front of lawmakers, and yet nothing really changes. What's going on to really hold him accountable for how the DHS is being operated? Well, the thing to understand is Mayorkas wants this crisis to happen. And in fact, he views his job not as securing the border, not as stopping illegal immigration, but speeding it up, making it more efficient. So... You may have seen the last time Mayorkas testified in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Um, I, I asked him a whole series of questions. I asked him, how, how many migrants died last year crossing illegally into this country? He said, I have no idea. I said, the answer is 853. But you don't give a damn because it's not your ranch and your farm that you're finding dead bodies like Texans are finding every day of the year. And, and, and I put up a poster of colored wristbands. And I asked him, what are these colored wristbands? And I got to say, his answer shocked me. He said, I have utterly no idea. I've never seen them before. Mm. And, and, and that startled me. I said, Mr. Secretary, you just told the American people you were utterly incompetent at your job and you don't give a damn enough even to pretend to try. Because virtually every illegal immigrant who comes to this country is wearing one of those colored wristbands. The colors correspond to how many thousands of dollars they owe the cartels. When you stand on the banks of the Rio Grande River, as I have many times, you see hundreds or thousands of those wristbands there. And the, and the teenage boys, they come in, most of them owe thousands of dollars to the cartels, and Joe Biden ships them to every city in America. We're in New York City. There are thousands of teenage boys that owe thousands of dollars to the cartels that are committing crimes here in New York. And as bad as the teenage boys have it, the girls have it worse. There are thousands and thousands of these girls that are being sex trafficked, that are trapped in forced prostitution. And I look at these wristbands. They're modern-day leg irons. This is slavery, and it is because Joe Biden, and let's be clear, every single Senate Democrat wants this invasion to happen, and they don't care about the kids and the body bags 
that, that, that we're experiencing as a result. Look, unfortunately, we've been reporting on that. We had our border correspondent talking exactly of uh, the focus again on the, the wristbands and yeah. how the process actually works. Uh, just uh, hor horrific to even to even hear. Uh, before we let you go, let's talk about the book really yeah. quickly. I know we, we, we dove in a, a little bit. Um, behind this book, by, underneath these pages here, uh, talk to us again about this and why you think it's so important to have this book in your hands. Well, it's important to understand, number one, how and why this happened, how the left is. Let's take big business. There's a chapter on big business. Mm -hmm. You've got to be wondering, how on earth did big corporations become the economic enforcement arm for the radical left where they cancel you, they fire you if you disagree? Well, this walks through the takeover, but it also, in terms of the battle plan of how to win, it focuses, it does a deep dive on Bud Light, and Target. You look at Bud Light. Has there been a brand in our lifetime that has lit itself on fire more because the customers stood up and revolted and, and Bud Light went from the number one selling beer in America to it dropped out of the top 10. It lost tens of billions of dollars because they looked down at their customers with absolute condescension. And then you fast forward to Target where they were marketing uh, LGBT goods and to, to young kids and in particular they're selling swimsuits for two and three year old boys that are advertised as tuck friendly so they can tuck their genitals out of the way and pretend to be a little girl. And you know what? Moms got pissed and said, why are you trying to indoctrinate my children? Now, here's what's really encouraging. If you look at the conversations of the top executives at Target, what they were saying as this scandal exploded is we don't want to be another Bud Light. How do you make corporate America not woke? You increase the cost of being woke and you make it more than the benefits. And, and what this book, Unwoke, does is it lays out exactly how we are winning and how we can win. And I got to tell you, the book comes out tomorrow, but it is already, as we speak, it is number one, number two, and number three simultaneously on Amazon's politics bestsellers, the audio book and the Kindle and the hardcover. And so I would encourage folks, go to Amazon, buy Unwoke. It, it, it's not an academic book. It's filled with stories. It's filled, filled with real examples that matter for you and matter for your life. Congratulations, by the way. Already uh, the top of the charts there. That's amazing. Again, tomorrow, this is out tomorrow, but they yep. can buy it today. Today you can buy it on Amazon. Tomorrow, any bookstore in America, you can buy it. All right. Talk about timing, right? Oh, my goodness. Every single chapter, it's like we can apply that to the news stories we cover. And, of course, then the political perspective, too, is really fascinating. Texas Senator Ted Cruz joining us in studio. Thank you, Thank sir. you so much. We appreciate it.